It's the last quarter of 2022. Finding a single board computer is proving very difficult and even finding the chips that populate a single board computer is proving very difficult. Uh, finding a Raspberry Pi, for instance, if you can find one, they are hideously expensive. This is an Orange Pi. In fact, it's an Orange Pi PC Plus. And I've been dabbling with these guys long before there was a problem with either chip supply or single board computer supply. So I've probably got mm, maybe about half a dozen or so. And they range from the Orange Pi Zero, which I've done a video on and I'll link it up here, uh, through to there's an Orange Pi PC Plus, which is running my Pi Hole. And that's another video, which I'll link up here as well. And this one is the Orange Pi PC Plus. And the plus means that there is no SD card in here. Uh, once your operating system is on board, you are good to go. So eight gigabytes of onboard uh, memory for the, I think it's EMMC, uh, for loading up your operating system. So I was fiddling around with this and I was using it, well, basically just for experimentation. I had an operating system on here where I could remote in to a desktop. So for instance, I could be on my, mm, on my PC, I could be on my iPad, and I could remote in and see the desktop on this thing, uh, even though there's nothing connected to it in terms of keyboard, mouse, uh, or screen. So that was pretty cool, and it was just for fun. But uh, then it occurred to me that it could be useful for something else. And I've been thinking recently about my music collection. So uh, a little bit of history, um, back in the day, and I'm talking about late 70s and early 80s, my music collection was vinyl. Uh, so that's, that's pretty interesting, and I'd love to know where that vinyl is now because I don't have it. And probably around about the uh, mid-80s, I started buying CDs. In fact, I think with my first ever legitimate paycheck as a working person, post-university, I bought a CD player a Philips CD player, which is pretty rare at the time, um, had just come into the country. And CDs um, were hideously expensive. This is one of the first ones that I bought. Um, I think the very first one was Purple Rain um, by Prince. So, uh, yeah, it sort of dates me a little bit, so don't judge me on the music. But interestingly enough, at the time, and as I said, we're talking about mid-'80s, these things here were pretty expensive, somewhere between $20 and $30 Australian at the time. Sort of thing where you think about, you know, should I eat tonight or buy a CD? And I accumulated a lot of them. Uh, probably, well, as far as I can tell by having a look, maybe three to four giant plastic tubs of them, plus a few boxes as well. I hadn't seen this one for probably a good mm, 25 years since I've seen this one here. Because at some point, what I did was I digitized them. So, I mean, they're already digital being CD, but what I mean is I converted them to MP3s. In fact, I was flirting briefly with the idea of converting to OGS, but then, you know, being able to find a device that can play an OG, as beautiful as that, uh, as that is, uh, is, uh, is difficult. MP3, you know, it's, it's not great. It's not lossless, um, but it's still around. So, um, yeah, I guess uh, we're sort of stuck with it. And so um, I made um, copies of these, illegally probably, I don't really know, I mean I did buy the original and it's interesting that if I wanted to play this now I couldn't, I, don't, I literally don't have a CD player apart from the one on the computer that I could, um, that I could play it through. And one of the reasons why I ended up going to um, you know, like a hard drive version of these things um, was because we were travelling. And we couldn't travel with three boxes full of uh, CDs. So I condensed it down. I think initially, actually, it was condensed down onto DVD drives and then ultimately on hard drives. And now we're at the next level. What do we do with the hard drives? Well, what we could do is we could take our hard drive full of music and here's my three or four boxes of, uh, of music and some videos as well. And we could plug it into a single board computer. And all we need to do now is to figure out how to uh, make the single board computer throw its music and video out to the local network. 
So uh, let's go upstairs and have a look on the computer. And this is not going to be a how-to because I didn't write everything down, but it is pretty straightforward to actually just throw on uh, the software required. Put this on the network and then anything can access it and then your videos and music can be streamed anywhere around your network. Pretty cool. So uh, just in this terminal window here, I have SSH'd into the Orange Pi PC Plus as root and it's just a normal Armbian style uh, operating system, nothing too dramatic there. It is a desktop version, um, but apart from that, it's uh, yeah, you can remote log in and do what you need to do. I've just updated it, so it's looking for a reboot soon, um, so I'll do that. Um, in the meantime, I've also here I'm using Remina to remote desktop in, so this is the desktop version, so you can see. Uh, it's just like a normal desktop. You can access all your normal, uh, you know, things that you'd expect in an operating system of this style. Um, what I've got up here, though, is I've got the um, the media file section. So this is just access to the external drive. And I've just got three folders here, my video files, my music files, and a transfer file uh, directory, sorry, I should say, which... Um, I just used to put files in things like PDFs that I want access to around the place or, you know, G-code files and, and so forth. So it's just a nice uh, little directory to have to transfer bits and pieces between machines. And I've got my Spandau Ballet open here, but you wouldn't open it uh, through remote desktop. That would be too slow. What I've actually done is I have uh, set up an NFS server. And uh, this is sort of uh, something which you can do on many devices. So uh, on my Linux machine, it just comes up as a normal uh, directory file system. Here's my uh, track uh, that I can uh, play. Uh, let's play, I think I've got Audacious up and running with this one. And so just press play. And uh, there is Sounds of the 80s straight into your ears. <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the uh, that's the media server. Very simple to uh, set up. Don't need a lot of uh, hardware. Don't need a lot of software, and uh, very handy to have uh, music and video wherever you are in the house. I guess the question is, how does this compare to the various Raspberry Pis? Well, you know, not to make a joke, but it's a little apples and oranges, I suppose. Uh, raspberries and, and oranges in this case because they are different. I mean, they're the same, same, but they're also different. So I'm not sure that the comparison is really useful. My comparison is, do they do the job which they have been uh, designed for? Uh, and if that's the case, then uh, all's good. I did print out a case for this, and uh, uh, I think that goes through here. This is my onboard antenna. Uh, yeah, so... I wonder if it actually goes all the way through. Ooh, that's come off, so that's probably not supposed to be there. Let's try this again. Oh, yes, that's a very snug fit. So that's my antenna. Um, I'm just wondering how far I need to push that through. It's very tight. And I did print this out with pretty low specs in terms of the, uh, the fill. It's reasonably low quality because, you know, <laughs> that's me. Um, So skipping all the boring bits, uh, there it is in its enclosure. It's just a, uh, a Thingiverse file, which I've downloaded. Not my best printing effort, but uh, quite a nice box. And uh, I've only just altered it a little bit so that I can have this uh, SOT89 transistor sitting out there. And basically what that's about is that I've got 5 volts coming into the fan and then out via a current limiting resistor. In fact, I think the 5 volts comes in via a current limiting resistor and that's a pot. Uh, so you can vary the fan speed. Uh, so I haven't put PD, uh, PWM on that. It's really no need. Uh, and then that comes due down to the collector of the uh, SS8050 transistor. And uh, that's turned on and off via um, one of the GPIOs, that's, which has got a 220-ohm resistor coming out to base. And then the current flows down uh, to ground. Uh, and really all that's about is that there's a little script in there which is executed on startup and it just monitors the temperature uh, of the CPU every five seconds or so. And we've seen this before. I've done this before with uh, with Orange Pies. 
but basically I think I've got it like 37 degrees Celsius the uh, the fan will uh, it'll start to monitor it if it gets above I think it's 44 the fan will kick in and then it'll drop below 44 and when it drops below 37 uh, the fan will see so there's a little hysteresis in there of about six or seven degrees so it's not uh, you know constantly hunting uh, and that's worked pretty well before so um, yeah I think I'll just stick this somewhere in the house and uh, we'll get it to pump out uh, video and audio from this hard drive probably the only thing I've had a little bit of trouble with uh, and it's um, it's mainly to do with we've got a couple of iPads in the house and uh, certainly you can uh, over HTTP you can see this and some of the audio and some of the video plays but Oh my God, uh, you know, the, the universe is very small when you've got an Apple device. So it doesn't like a lot of the standard codecs and uh, it just won't, it'll just refuse to play them. I'm currently trying a workaround via a VLC app, which tends to be a bit more generous with its codecs. And, uh, and I've just got an NFS server on here and I'm just configuring between the two to get a nicer interface and perhaps a little bit of uh, an opportunity to, pay, to play those those media which um, currently the iPad refuses and look that's been a bit of a problem with the iPad all the way along I I like my iPad it's it's currently filming this as we speak but you know it's a very narrow universe that uh, that Apple lives in and um, and that's a bit of a shame but uh, I'm sure we'll get around that and in the meantime there are plenty of other devices around including a, a big screen um, smart TV which um, which this pumps out too fine so um, that is the circuit working for this week. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the section below and we'll see you next time.